Yes, sir, perfect. Hallelujah. Let's bow for prayer this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to assemble in your house again, Father. We thank you, Father, for being such a good, good Father. Bless this service on tonight, Father God. Let your glory reign in this place of, that it might make teaching and preaching easy. We bind the hand of the enemy, take authority over anything that will come against this service. We ask you to bless this service. We give your name glory, honor, and praise, Lord. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody says amen.
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Lord, you are good and sing. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good, yeah. Lord, you are good and yeah, your yeah. mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. You may be seated. Good to see y'all tonight. First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John 5, 18 says, you have it? Do you have it? We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. A few weeks ago, we started on this 
series, we've been talking about stay in the fight. This is the sixth message in that series. And we looked at Ephesians chapter two. I won't go back there tonight since this is the sixth installment. I'll try to make it brief, but we looked at Ephesians chapter six. And from that, we found out that as long as we are alive as saints of God, there are three things we're going to have to contend with. And the three things are number one, Satan, uh, the flesh, and the world. Those will be continually going on. We got to just uh, continually contend with these things. And we said that we just got to stay in the fight because there are a whole lot of saints who have given up the fight. And we are in a fight. And so we have to stand and we have to fight and we have to contend for the faith and we have to make decisions to stay on the Lord's side. Amen? Amen. So we've been talking about the world and we said the world by definition is the society of the unsaved. And we said the world is headed up by the little G-O-D of this world, Satan. And we found out that people who are in the world are spiritually blind and thank the Lord those of us who are saved we saw the light and came to the light and so we've been learning that we're going to have to not love the world neither the things that are in the world and we found out <clears throat> from scripture that God chose us out of the world aren't you glad about that and we've got to make a determination that since he chose us out that we are not going to go back into what he chose us out of. How many of y'all remember that? Amen. And then the scripture says something real important, and that's what I want you to see out in verse 19. It says, and we know that we are, that we are of God, and here it is, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Now one translation says the world is under the control of the evil one. Keep in mind that we're not talking about the terrestrial ball, the earth. We're talking about that spiritual sphere that's composed of the unsaved, that's headed up by the, by the devil. It is a system. It's a system. And so this world system is what we're talking about. And it says the world uh, lieth in wickedness. Is that what your Bible says? <clears throat> and again, one translation says... The world is under the control of the evil one. So people who are in the world are under the control of the evil one. That's who they're under. He's under, they're under control of the evil one. Now we saw when we were back over there in Ephesians, and I don't turn it, I'm just going to read it to you. It puts it even further in context. It says over there <clears throat> that in time past, we walked according to the course of this world. This is before we got saved. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's before we got saved, amen? amen. That's where we were and that's what we did and that was who we, that who, we, uh, who we were. And then it goes on to say, but God saved us. Aren't you glad he saved you? Amen. So the world is under the control of the evil one and another translation says this. It says people who are not saved are under the power of the evil one. Under the power of the evil one. Then another translation translates verse 19. The latter part says, saying, the whole world lieth in darkness. The whole world lieth in darkness. So people who are not saved are in the dark. Darkness is a symbol of satanic activity. Darkness is a symbol of ignorance because people who are in the dark can't see. They don't know. Satan has blinded their minds, the scripture says in Corinthians. So, again, we need to understand that these people are in the dark, they are in wickedness, and we need to understand this so that we won't try to touch or handle, or taste, or be a part of anything that is worldly. Because if it's not godly, it's worldly. And that's hard. Now let me tell you something good about Christianity, and always remember this, 
uh, you have to make a choice. It's all about choices, it's all about decisions. Uh, and God won't make you make a choice. You have to make a choice that you want him and that you want the things that he is all about. You want the life, uh, the Christian life, and, that, and so it's a choice. And, and so it's hard when you try to live in the world and also in the church. That makes it difficult. That's why the scripture says the way of the transgressor is hard. But you have to make up your mind yourself that you want to cleave to the God and you want to shun evil, even the very appearance of evil, and you want to be where the Lord can bless you real good. Amen? Amen. So we don't want to be a part of darkness. Turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, and go down to verse 13. Colossians 1 and 13. And, you know, when you get home, you can read up and down a few verses uh, and put it even more in context. But for the purpose of teaching tonight, I can't put every scripture totally in context because that would take us a little bit too long. Uh, and I don't want y'all to be somebody like somebody in the, uh, in the New Testament that was in the balcony and fell asleep and fell out the balcony. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it short. Amen? Colossians 1.13 says... You got it? Yes. Who hath delivered us from the power of what? Darkness. Of darkness and have translated or transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. So therefore, we ought to be messing around in the dark, and by dark I mean in the realm of satanic activity, because when we got saved, he delivered us. Amen? Amen? So now that we're in the kingdom of his dear son, which is light, we don't want to go around and be playing in the dark. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to read a lot of scripture here, put, it, put this in context. And then we're going to look at our job description as saints of the most high God. Ephesians chapter 5. And it's all about choice now. If you make a choice for righteousness and you make a choice for God, God will empower you. Amen. See, because guess what? You can't live this life by yourself. Amen. Look at your neighbor around and point them and say, you need help. Amen. That's right. So that's why Father God gave us Holy Spirit. He said, I give you a comforter and uh, one thing that Holy Spirit is called is helper. He's there to help us. He'll help us do anything that's righteous and right if we ask him. Sometimes you just have to say, Holy Ghost, help me. And he'll help you. He'll empower you. Do I have a witness? Amen. Ephesians 5 and 1 says, be therefore, you got it? Followers or imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetedness, let it not once be named among you as becometh saints. Amen. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this, we, for this ye know, that no whoremonger no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Don't let nobody fool you. Verse 7 says, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. This is so plain. Verse 8 says, For ye were sometime, used to be darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Somebody say, I'm light in the Lord. So, the apostle goes on to say, Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving or demonstrating what is acceptable unto the Lord. 
and have no fellowship. That means don't get in the ship with those fellows who are involved in the unfruitful works of darkness. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now we're getting toward our job description. Reprove them, reprove them. For shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Now look at me, our job is to walk in the light, and as we walk in the light, and because we are light, Watch what I'm going to say. Our walk itself will reprove those that are in darkness. Amen. Stay with me now, because you don't have to go fuss nobody out. You don't have to go and try to correct somebody. All you got to do is live it. Now, what happens is, when we try to live like they live, then we are not reproving anything. And we aren't proving anything either. And see, what we got to understand as saints is our witness is very important. Our witness. The most important thing you have going for you as a child of God is your witness. Your witness doesn't mean what you say. Your witness means what you do. And if you live right in front of people that's in the dark, then that in itself will be reproof. It'll be reproof or it'll, it'll show correction. Let me, let me give you another uh, another translation. It says this. It says light makes everything visible and clear. Light makes everything visible and clear. Amen. So, as a child of God, if you come up, if you come up and you are the light, you are light in the Lord. Then it becomes clear. Then what is not of God. Because your life clearly shows what is of God. Amen. Let me make it a little plainer. Uh, the best thing we can do for people in the world, the best thing we can do for people in the world is let the light of Christ shine through us. That's the best thing. And see, what's so tragic about this day is we are allowing the world to pollute the church. Now that's what is so sad about the day we live in, and, we, and so many people who have been saved are now allowing themselves to go back and do what the people in darkness are doing. But we want you to see something because this scripture I'm going to give you, turn to John chapter 8, John chapter 8, and verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Do you have it? John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but listen to this part. But shall have the light of life. Amen. Now the greatest witness that you have is your lifestyle. That's your lifestyle. And you know what's so sad? It's what's so sad that some people, you know, they think that by doing like the world does, that's going to make you more appealing. But see, what, what people will do is, while you are with the world, doing what they do, they'll laugh with you and act like they're enjoying you and all this kind of stuff. And then as soon as you turn your back, they're going to talk about you. And then that actually throws shade on your witness. It would have been better if you just, you know, if you just weren't even in their presence or in their presence, you, you held to a standard. And the standard is holiness. So Jesus gives us a job description. And this is important. Uh, I mean, this is so important. I just wish I could express it 
as important as it is. And that's in Matthew chapter 5. Turn there. Somebody say, my greatest witness is my lifestyle. That's right. Matthew 5. Because Christianity is not a religion, it's a lifestyle. Amen? Matthew chapter 5. And see, uh, and see, it's choice. It's all about choice. You decide to get saved, so now you have to choose to live the life of a Christian. Amen. And we're going to see in just a minute then, and I'm, I'm never going to tell anybody to stop being a Christian. I'm never. So I'm saying what you need to do is you need to ask the Lord to help you to get your life to line up. And I know who I'm talking to tonight by the Holy Spirit. I know I'm talking to people who are here at Bible study. But see, you are the ones that's going to have to hold the standard. That's why the Lord is sending this message, and now he's getting ready to tell you what he expects of us as being born-again children. Matthew chapter 5, and uh, I'm going to start with verse 13. I'm not going to spend a lot of time in verse 13, but I'm going to give you a powerful illustration. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, you have it? Now, Jesus is telling us who and what we are. He's telling us what he expects us to be, what he expects out of us as being disciples and followers of Jesus Christ. And again, now, let me tell you something. Let me, I'm trying to make this plain as I can. See, uh, see when, when, you, when you signed up and you received Christ as your Savior, you then came to the point where you acknowledged, I'm going against the grain. I'm not going with the flow anymore. I'm going with Jesus. That's the decision. So you got to make it all the way. You just got to make it all the way. And I'm going to tell you something. God will bless you for it. God will bless you for being resolute and making up your mind and deciding you're going to live in the light. Look what this is. Uh, 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Now, let me, let me just talk about salt just for a minute. And uh, on a personal note, I'm just, I'm glad I'm old enough to have seen some things like a smokehouse and had a chance to eat country ham and stuff that's been salted. And it's amazing how that, that ham could lay in the smokehouse without being refrigerated and the salt on it would, would preserve it. So not only is the salt a preservative, but it adds flavor. So most of us, maybe not all of us, most of us have a salt shaker on the table. And if we get something that is not, doesn't have enough salt on it, we can sprinkle a little salt on it, and that'll give it more flavor. See, we, we present God's flavor in the earth. One place the Bible even says we, we even put off an aroma before God that's a sweet smelling savor. But we, we, we bring his flavor. Now, if you were at your house and uh, you were eating some grits or some string beans or whatever and it was totally unsalted and you decided you were going to put some salt on it, watch this. And after you put the salt on it, it didn't taste any different. You hear what I said? It didn't taste any different. You know what you would say? Something wrong with this salt. Wouldn't you? You look at it, is this salt or, or what is this? You know? Because guess what? The salt is supposed to make a difference. So in the earth, we make a difference by bringing the flavor of Christ, the lifestyle of Christ. Now, now I'm going to tell, tell you what the Lord said as I read this to me. You know, if the, if the salt ain't making a difference, get it off the table. I'm not going to elaborate on that anymore. <laughs> Just get it off the table. See, but this is our job. So he goes on to say, verse 14. Now listen, everybody say, this is, this is, what, this is what he wants me to be. This is what he wants me to be. Now listen, keep in mind now we're talking about the world as being the unsaved society. He says, ye are, everybody say, I am. I am. See, ye are the light 
of the world. See? See, you're the only light the world has. First scripture I read said, Jesus says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Well, guess where Jesus is now? He's in you. So his light in you radiates out, you know, so, so the others can see him. See? People in the world that's in darkness can see your, your, your lifestyle and see the light. Are you hearing me? So he says, ye are the light. Everybody say, I'm the light, I'm the light. And, and see, you are the light of the world. You're the light for the people that's not saved. See, and just like if, if the salt doesn't make a difference, it needs to get off the table. He goes on and says, when we talk about light, I don't want to get you mixed up. You are the light of the world. You are a city that's set on the hill that cannot be hid. He says, neither do men light a candle and put it on the bushel. That means they don't cover the candle up after they light it. But on the candlestick, and guess what it does? It gives light unto all that are in the house. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to be the light of the world. See? So he goes on to say, verse 16, here's our job. This is our job. Your job is not just to come to church on Sunday or the Bible study on Thursday, and that's wonderful, but, it, but the rubber meets the road when you go out the door. The rubber meets the, wor- the road when you go out into the world, among the world. Are you hearing me? It's easy in here on Sunday or on Thursday night, but then the challenge comes when you are on the job, in the neighborhood, in the presence of old friends and family. See, he says, here's what you have to do. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men. Why? That they may see your good works and then glorify your Father that's in heaven. See? So you're the light of the world. How are people going to see if, if, if we don't let our light shine? How are people in the world going to see the light? If, and, and the scripture says, we are the light. You know how they're going to see the light? They're going to see you. And they're going to see me. Because he says, ye are the light. Isn't that what he said? Everybody say, I'm the light, I'm the light. So here's what light does. Light does three things. Light reveals. It reveals. I thought about, uh, I was going to set something up tonight, but I decided not to do that because it might scare somebody. I was going to get with it with the guys in the front and the guys in the back, and then I got this point, I was going to have them to, to quickly turn off all the lights. And lost, don't do that. Somebody might holler and think something happened. <laughs> but what I was going to do then is just turn on the flashlight on my cell phone to show you. Because light not only reveals, but it removes darkness. See, this when we talked about that scripture about reproving. See, light reveals, it reveals the lifestyle of Christ that's, that's living through you. See, it's more to it than just you. You can't just be... You just can't be a selfish Christian and say, well, I'm going to do me. No, you need to do Christ. Amen. You need to do Christ because your witness is on the line. And the scripture says light reveals. And not only that, but in a dark place, light can guide, be a guiding light. See, you can, it can show people the way to go. And that's what your life's for. You're the light of the world, so it will reveal and again, again, when you show up, when you show up around sinners and they, and they see your good works, they're going to have to know this is God in them. And the scripture says you can come to a point where people will require from you an answer. You know, how you live like this? How, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And then that's where words come in. You know, I, I heard somebody say, uh, 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 make sure you witness for God and if need be, use words. That'll wake somebody up about midnight. You might not have to use no words. Your life. Your life. Amen? Amen. Your life's supposed to reveal the light of Christ. So light reveals, light guides, and light will remove darkness. Light will remove darkness. See? So a lot of places are just waiting for you to show up. And then... You don't, have to, you don't have to say a whole lot of thank you, Jesus, thank the Lord, speaking in tongues, running around somewhere and all that kind of, hallelujah, glory to God. You know, you know somebody asks the phone, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. No, hello. 
See? <laughs> it's your lifestyle. Amen? And again, I want to tell you something. Tell you something. Again, you can show up and be like the world and do what they're doing, and they act like they just love you. And as soon as you get out of their sight, they're going to talk about you. Because we have done it. I ain't getting no amen. It's okay. What did they say? I thought they were saved. Lord, honey, if that's saved, I don't want to be part of that. And see, you need to understand that you don't want you don't want to be a stumbling block in somebody's way to hinder them from getting saved. Amen. I need an amen. This is serious because Jesus said, "This is your job. You are the light." Come on, say, "Let me say, I'm the light. I'm the light." And some people may never see the inside of a church, but they'll see you. And see, it's a lot on the line. It's a lot on the line. Because you don't want to be the one that's hindering somebody from being saved. And it's a choice, see. You chose Christ, so go ahead on and choose to live in him and move in him and have your being in him and allow him to shine through you. Amen? Light will reveal, light will guide, light will remove darkness. One more scripture for the night, and that is in uh, Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Turn there if you would. Now, let me tell you what this scripture is actually talking about. This is prophetic scriptures, and they're talking about Jerusalem. It's really talking about Jerusalem, and it's really talking about at a time when Christ is going to be revealed in the latter days at Jerusalem. But there's a principle here that we want you to see because it's so powerful. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise. Shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Then he says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, the people. Now listen to me, this is what's going on right now. Darkness is covering the earth, and people. It goes on, but, so it changes, the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. See, this is the time to rise and shine. Light shows up best when it's dark. Verse three says, and Gentiles, and the word Gentiles uh, literally means non-Jew, but then it also means without God. And Gentiles shall do what? Shall come to your light. Then it's talking about even here Jerusalem. And kings to thy brightness of thy rising. So we're in a time now when it's very dark. We're in a time. I'm talking about when uh, it seems as if though the system of Satan is winning. But it's not. Watch this. Greater is he, listen to this, that's in you. But listen to the, listen to the, listen to what's it, than he that's where? In the, world. in the world. See, there's that word, world. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. See? And you are of God, little children. And you've already overcome them. Amen? Amen? That's any spirit of antichrist. See? So what's going on in the world right now? Open your eyes and see. Darkness and gross darkness is covering the earth. See? And it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And so it's no time now 
to blend in, it's time now to stand out. It's time now to let your light shine. And this is what God wants from the church in this last day. He wants us to, to rise and shine. Because the glory is on you. See, just waiting for you to rise and shine. And he tells you right here that because of this, Gentiles will come to you. Because you know what people are looking for? Some, they're looking for the light. I was listening to somebody the other day, they were teaching, and it was so it was good because we don't think things like this. You know, very rather do we think how blessed we are that God chose us. And you know, God's so powerful. See, He He didn't He didn't choose who would get saved, but He knew who would get saved. You know why? He knows everything. He hadn't predestined anybody to be lost. But see, you need to think sometimes. I was actually chosen. And the scripture we saw the other week said he chose you out of the world. See, aren't you glad about that? You know, we love, we love, uh, we love, and it's, it's powerful. That's the gospel, John 3, 16. But, but it goes on, it goes on, listen to this. Listen, just listen, you don't have to turn there. 16 said, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of, of God. Now listen to verse 19. And this is a condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, people don't like, people don't like to come to the light because it, it reproves and shows up the darkness. Again, that's why I'm saying some places you don't even have to say a word. Just show up with a lifestyle. Amen? Just show up with a lifestyle. And then sometimes in some activities, in some places, be conspicuously absent on purpose. You know, let them look for you. It's like everybody at the feast was looking for Jesus. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is Jesus? And then the scripture says, on the last day of the feast, he showed up. And he said, if any of y'all thirst, let him come to me and drink. Are you hearing me? So there's some place you just need to be absent from. And then, see, you'll come to the point when you do show up or when they do see you, then people will want, they'll want, they'll want what you have. One last scripture, uh, 2 Timothy. Here's the decision. Now, here's the decision. 2 Timothy. Everybody say, I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, that may be the design on our next church t-shirt. I'm the light. You know? What did I say turn? <laughs> Second Timothy. Now here's the decision that we have to make. And see, you don't, you don't hear a lot of this preaching. That's why, that's why there's so much mixture. And you know, I went off last week. I'm sorry. I, I, I went off because some things just get on your last nerve. And I'm, you have to forgive me because I went off last week. And I'm trying to be more tame and better tonight. Notice how it's low and slow I'm talking. <laughs> Calm. Because, see, it, it, really, it really hurts. It hurts the cause of Christ when people who name Christ and then they continue to do sinful things. Are you hearing me? That's why we started off in 1 John and said, whoever is born of God, sin if not. What does that mean? That, that means I got to live a perfect, that means it's not your lifestyle. See, you don't live a lifestyle of sin. That's not your lifestyle. See, your lifestyle is holiness and righteousness. Say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> See, that's your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is not a, a sinner. It's not a sinner. 
And that's not to say you won't ever sin, but, but it's not your lifestyle. See, people in the world sin as a lifestyle. Say amen to that. See, but that's not your lifestyle. That's not your lifestyle. See, that's not your lifestyle. So that's why I said whoever born of God doesn't sin. But if you are begotten of God, you keep yourself. What does that mean? I make a decision. I make a decision with the help of God. I'm not going to live a lifestyle of sin. What does that mean? That means I'm going to come out from among them, be separate. I'm not going to go where sinners go. I'm not going to do what sinners do. And guess what? If I make that decision, Holy Spirit will help me. And the power, real quick, turn back there. Let me show you this. Go back to 1 John 5, where we started. Quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Keep your marker, a finger there, uh, uh, something there at 2 Timothy. First John 5, 18, it says, and you know, let me, let me turn there because some, there's something here very interesting. Sometimes some of you may, I didn't go up that far, but I, I will say something about that since we're right here. Um, <laughs> Verse 16 says, I just throw this in for free, a little icing on the cake. If any man see if his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin, that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I pray not, I do not, I do not say that he shall pray for it. What is that talking about? Look at it. Let's make it real simple. If somebody is, in, is sinning and they die, Ain't no need to pray for them. <laughs> if somebody dead, what your, what your prayer going to do? Are you hearing me? And see, all, a lot of us start thinking about blasphemy and all this kind of stuff. No, it's just it's so simple. Don't make it harder than it is. You know, you can pray for somebody if, if they have sinned and it didn't kill them. But if it's killed them, you can't pray for them. I turned the funeral out. I went to a Catholic funeral in D.C. I turned it out. I did. They should have never put me on the program. <laughs> and so my aunt had passed. And the priest, you know, he was doing the smoke and all that kind of stuff all around the cast and everything. So then he said, let's pray for sister so-and-so. And, and we're going to pray her out of purgatory and blah, 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 blah. And let me tell you something. I told you I was going to be nice, I am. You can't, it, you're wasting your breath praying for somebody that's dead. And you're really wasting your breath praying for somebody that died in sin. That's hard, Pastor Lawson. See, you can't pray for nobody that's dead. Either they were saved or they won't. Ain't got no amen. The person that died in Christ don't need your prayers. And your prayers ain't going to change what happened with somebody who didn't die in Christ. That's why now is the time you need to let your light shine. And pray for them while the blood is running warm. My wife and I were having a conversation. And she said, you know what? And it, it blessed me. Because it's good when you can, hear, you can hear the Lord talk to you through people. Because I've been wondering about some things. I just, this is free. And she said, you know, you know what? I said, what? See, a lot of people, she said, are counting on just before they die. They're going to say a prayer and get saved. But see, most people are really counting on that. And you know what my wife said? She said, but the problem today is a whole lot of people, when they get up to death, they're out of their mind. They demented, all hammered. Are you listening? So you need to tell folk, because that's what most people are, are thinking right now. I'm going to have a good time, and, and when I look up and see Jesus come, I'm saying, fear me, Lord, real quick. It's going to be, when you see him, it's going to be too late. Because you can't pray that prayer, watch this, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You ain't even going to have time to get an eye out your mouth.
and a whole lot of people are depending on that. You don't know what kind of shape you're going to be in when your time comes to pass. So you need to tell folks. You can't sit around and think, oh, girl, I'm going to party while I can. I'm going to do what I can want to do while I can, boy. And just before I go, I'm going to get it right. You may not know. You don't know what kind of mind you're going to be in. Amen. Enough of that. But our job is to be light. Amen? Amen. So then uh, uh, what I was going you to see, it says, this is good news. It says, and, who's, and who's so up? All right, it says, I didn't read it all. Verse 17 says, all, righteous, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Then he says, we know, but we know this, verse 18, whoever is born of God sinneth not. If you look it up in the Amplified Bible or another Bible, living Bible, so they don't have a lifestyle of sin. Your lifestyle is not a lifestyle of sin. Did I say you wouldn't ever sin? No, I didn't say that. But Holy Spirit will show you this Holy Spirit reproves us of sin and righteousness. He shows us what's sin. He shows us what's right. Amen. Amen. So he says, we know that whosoever born of God is sin and not, not a lifestyle. But he that's begotten of God does what? What? Keepeth himself. He guards himself. He watches himself. Tell your neighbor, you got to watch yourself. Got to watch yourself. Yeah, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And look at this. Here's the good news. This is shallow stuff. Somebody, when I finish reading this, say glory to God. And look what it says. And the wicked one touches him not. That's right. Then it goes on with what we did as a test. And we know that we are of God and the whole world life and thought. So I, I told you to turn to Second Timothy. Go there. Chapter 2. Here's the decision, and it's just a decision. If you make the decision, life is much easier when you make a decision. Grandma said, don't nothing be the made-up mind. I got my mind made up to serve the Lord. Choir should sing that song here. That's a good song. I got my mind made up to serve the Lord. Y'all should have been here back then when the choir sang that. Elder Harris used to be the director. He said, come on, choir, come on, come on. <laughs> it was good. He had them singing, too. I got my mind made up. To sh- you know, don't nothing be the made up mind. Is your mind made up? It's just a choice. It's a choice. And see, nobody, here's what you got to understand. Nobody going to fall out with you. If you decide you, look, if it, if it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord, listen, the scripture says, choose who you're going to serve. Are you, are you here? <laughs> When I growing up, sometimes I'd be around the house and my mama say something. And get, I said, oh, Lord. She said, call the one you serve. <laughs> if it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord. You know, the Bible said we're surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. But when, when I get up there, I ain't going to be worried about her whipping me no more. Because <laughs> that desire to whip will be done away with, be no more. Be all love. Amen. Amen. I can hear and I heard you down there talking about my <laughs> a great club. But guess what? Don't nothing be don't nothing. You gotta decide who you go. This is simple. Just decide who you're gonna serve. Amen. Just make up your mind. I'm gonna serve the Lord. It's a de- see, it's a decision. Everything is a decision. And nobody gonna fall out with you. If you decide you don't want to serve the Lord, that's your decision. But listen, don't muddy the water, don't blur the lines. Don't be in front of the world, living like the world. See, make a decision. So here's the decision, and God will help you. It's uh, 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 2 Timothy 2, 19. You got it? 2 Timothy 2, 19. Read it with me. Ready to read. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And he'll help you. If you name, if you say I'm a Christian, depart from iniquity. Just depart. If it's over that way, iniquity is over there, you depart and go another way. Be conspicuously absent 
in some places. Amen? Amen. Stand up, let's pray. We'll go home. Anybody get anything out of this? I hear Barbara. Is that Barbara? Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm so glad to see you. I thought I recognized that voice. Let's pray. Oh, give God a hand of prayer. Yes. Glad to see you. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word and for being so simple that even a child can understand it. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would help us, strengthen us in areas where we are weak. Lord, your apostle said that your strength is made perfect in weakness. So through your grace, let us grow in grace as you've in, you have graced us and planted us in grace. We're surrounded by grace. Help us to grow in it so we can please you in the way we live and the things we do and the things we say. Holy Spirit, we can do it if you help us. And then, Father, help us to stand up and be what you have predestined us to be and you said we are, we are light. We are salt, we are light in this dark world. And we know it's gross darkness. It's covering over the people. We know light is what they need. And this is our time to shine. So Jesus, God, Father, shine through us. Baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. And let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn brightly in all of us so we can walk and be and shine in this dark world. Help us. We need your help. Can't do it without you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to lift your hands and let's give God like 60 seconds of good, good strong praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give him, come on, 15 more seconds. Give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you. You're awesome. You're great. In you we live, move, and have our being. We magnify you tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give you the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, even in the midst of praise right now, the Lord is healing somebody's body just while we praise him. Bodily healing is happening for somebody right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, somebody shout glory to God three times. Amen, amen. Put your hands together and bless him real good. You may be seated. Pastor Della going to give us a few announcements. Today is her birthday. Would y'all help me sing happy birthday to her? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Della. Happy 
happy birthday.